Hi everyone, this is Holly from Hot Humble Pie. Welcome to my spring series. And if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, I'd love it if you click that button. So the first thing I want to show you is how I went about painting the pizza pans. This time I didn't spray paint. I did one coat of Rust-Oleum chalk paint because that's like more for furniture and I wanted this to be really durable. And I did a second coat. That's a second coat right there. Now I'm going to show you how I print on tissue paper because I do that during this video as well. It is just tissue paper you use for a gift. I'm using painter's tape here and you tape it as tight as you can without pulling it too hard onto cardstock. We're going to print these two prints up right here and that's how it comes out. I just put it through my printer the right side up so that the ink would print on the tissue paper. And I was showing you how easy it is to remove if you use painter's tape. You don't have to, you can cut it off, but I just wanted to show you that is an option. And now I'm just placing it down where I'd like it to be. I could have just left it all on tissue paper and glued it down because quite frankly, the tissue paper is so thin and transparent. I don't think you would even noticed it was tissue paper on the piece of pan, but I went ahead and I cut it out. And now I'm using the Dollar Tree glue stick and I'm gluing it down. Probably the tissue paper and the Dollar Tree glue stick have become my absolute favorites. They're, they're my two go-tos because the tissue paper I think is less noticeable than the vinyl, like from a Cricut. That's really kind of thick and you have so many more options. You can print up so many more intricate imagery and I just love it right now, unless they come up with something better or I, or I come up with something better. Plus, I know all of you can follow along and recreate these. All of my printables will be down below in my description box today and they are free printables. Now I'm using the craft sticks I got at Amazon. We are making a little white picket fence, although you can get these at the Dollar Tree. So I'm just starting to cut them into the little top pointy parts there to make it look like a fence. And now I'm just sanding the edges to give them a nice round smooth finish. And I'm going to lay these down and space them out. Now the left hand side there, it isn't glued down. I just laid the craft stick across the bottom, but I am gonna go ahead and glue it as you can see on the right hand side, cause I wasn't sure that I should glue both of them and I was correct, you'll see in a minute. After I glue this down, you're going to see how I needed it. To I actually needed to remove one of the craft sticks You'll see it right here. I'm gonna join it on the other stick. So that side only ended up with four craft sticks and this side ended up with five. And also when I place this down on the tray right now and flip it over so that I can get the shape, you know, the circular shape at the bottom so we can cut it to fit. I also realize the two end pieces are no longer going to be attached to the bottom. See how that was a higher uh, line up at the top there. Those are going to be glued directly down on the pizza pan. So this really is just taking your time measuring and placement and it should all work out. So you can see here I'm taking it apart because I realize, oh, I can't have that on the bottom. I have to cut above it. So that's what I was talking about. It really is a blessing that I can film this because I would have such a hard time explaining what I'm doing. You can see how I put that in place and now I'm gluing it. I kind of held it down where it needed to be. All of this is done by eye. And I found out the Dollar Tree pizza pans aren't actually all created equal. Some of them are, you know, they have mild imperfections. So you do have to measure as you go. And don't worry if your craft sticks overlap. I'm gonna overlap the one at the top right there. I just attached it to the one, you know, that you can see right there in the back, I just attached it at the top so it's overlapping. You don't notice that at all. And then once you have it together, you can see I'm just pulling the little 
uh, stakes down and gluing those onto the craft stick. And the last thing I'll do is put a little dot of glue to attach it to either end on those two stakes, the, kind of the free floating stakes that aren't attached to anything right now. I'm doing it right now. I'm gonna pull it up and do it that way and then just secure the rest of it Again, you'll see what I'm doing. I'm so sorry I can't explain this better. I just hope you, you can see what I'm doing. And you can slow YouTube videos down. There's an option with playback speed. You can slow me down if you need to see this in slow motion. And that's it. This is how you get that little fence on. So now we're going to give it a nice white washed look. And I'm just taking a little bit of the chalk paint and lightly dry brushing because I didn't want to cover it and make it snow white because I was afraid it would kind of disappear. I did want the wood to show just a little bit. And then we're going to take some of that nautical rope from the Dollar Tree and just start gluing it around kind of in a half moon shape. I'm just securing it there. But I did think as I was editing this video that I probably could have put the nautical rope all the way around the pizza pan before I put the fence on and that would have actually provided more material and foundation for the fence to stick to and it wouldn't affect the final look because it lays, you know, down below, you know, since it's sticking on the outside of the rim and the nautical rope lays below that, you still would be able to create this craft. And so that's something to keep in mind if you want to recreate this. I probably would put the nautical rope all the way around. It's just I had a different idea for what I wanted to put down below there. So now we're taking that furniture pen from the Dollar Tree in the color Walnut and we're just going to be distressing the edges of the fence a little bit just to make it look, well I don't know how to, I guess, a little, I always say this, but it is the, the reason I'm doing it. It's to make it look a little bit old and worn because I just think that's a cuter look. Now you can see the middle one I got a little bit too much on, no big deal, you just sand it off and that's what we have so far. So I decide that the little top area needs a cute, sweet little pink bow. That's ribbon from Hobby Lobby, 50% off, so it was $2. And I'm taking some of the Spanish moss from the Dollar Tree. I shoved it down inside. And some of this lavender from the Dollar Tree, which I also think is incredibly beautiful. And I'm only going to show this part once in this video because it would get really, really repetitive and boring for you. But I thought you guys might be interested how I put the hanger on the back. I sand the areas I'm going to put the glue down on to rough it up a little bit and then I'm using duct tape for this because I realize some people may want to hang this outside on the front door and I want it to be really sturdy for weather. So while the glue is still hot, I kind of put the duct tape down so it all melts together and kind of solders together and I don't know why it just seems to be stronger if you do it while it's hot. And then I add a second piece of duct tape on the top there and I just pinched them really tight in the corners and it's always worked for me but we're all done and I think this came up so so cute. For this next one, you're going to need three eggs. This is a printable I created also down below. And I'm using cardstock. I just printed it up on cardstock. You could use cereal box, poster board, whatever you want. And some fabric from Amazon. I will leave the link down below in my description box because it's now available. And I'm gluing it down using a glue stick to prevent wrinkling and bubbling. I tend to go with the driest glue. Now I haven't found a difference between the Dollar Tree glue and like an Elmer's brand name glue. So you can use whatever you want. Just make sure that you are generous with it and you apply plenty of it. If you want to seal this in, go ahead and mist them lightly with a clear varnish or a poly acrylic spray and then you can go ahead and seal your crafts with whatever you want at that point. You could just do a heavy coat of a polyacrylic spray. I often do that too and skip the Mod Podge if I don't want like a really plasticky look on my craft and that works as well as a protective barrier. But I know you can, you know, some people will say, oh, you can use hairspray. I used to do that and then some of my crafts started yellowing as the years went on. So I just wanted to warn you about that. So I avoid hairspray now if I know I'm going to keep a craft. If you're not going to keep a craft and you're just going to 
use it for that season, hairspray works perfectly fine. So now I'm just taking some Hobby Lobby ribbon that I got on sale for 50% off. As I mentioned before, you're going to see quite a bit of Hobby Lobby ribbon <laughs> in this video because they had a big sale and I went and I bought about 10 different rolls because obviously there's lots of choices there and it's absolutely gorgeous. And I'm just embellishing the eggs with a combination of Dollar Tree ribbon and Hobby Lobby ribbon. The one I'm going to edge these little eggs in is from Hobby Lobby and I'm going to edge all three of them. Using this ruler I got from the Dollar Tree. This is actually a really nice ruler for $1.25. It's metal. I'm going to put some faux shiplap lines on the tray. And then now I'm taking again Hobby Lobby ribbon and the nautical rope from the Dollar Tree. And I'm just doing a little, you'll see what I do. I just roll it around there, glue it, and put these little strips of ribbon around the nautical rope border because I thought that would be a nice accent. So when it comes to gluing my things down, you'll notice I glue one side and then another side and that's because every time I think I know where I want it and I try to glue it and then put it down, it'll suddenly be crooked or whatever. I like to have my stuff laying down first, positioned totally straight and then I know it's safe to glue it and the only way I found that I can glue things is to do it without moving them very much. So I tend to do one side and then the other side. So a lot of you will ask me how I make my bows and rather than show a tutorial in every video because we make so many bows when we craft, I do have a wonderful video out called 10 Bow Hacks and I will have that linked down below in my description box. It is time stamped so you can just hit that time and it will take you straight to the bow I'm making now which is called a floral bow. I took two ribbons from Hobby Lobby and looped them together so I would have a nice mix and now I'm just using a combination of some Dollar Tree flowers that I got and some some boxwood that I ordered off of Amazon and these are some wooden eggs from the Dollar Tree. I decided to just roughly paint little pink stripes on it to make it look cute and I'm going to glue that on the center of this bow and we're all done and I think this one came up so festive and so pretty. For this next one, we're going to go ahead and draw some more stripes and I'm taking the color Burnt Umber from Apple Barrel Paint and some white chalk paint and I'm mixing it to make a nice creamy soft taupe color I guess or maybe it's like a sand color, I'm not sure what you call that. It's a little darker than beige and I'm going to make some stripes on this pizza pan. So these are the printouts. I actually drew the bunny from a computer screen. I just laid my paper on top of the computer screen and traced a bunny shape, but I will provide that as a printable. And I went ahead and I printed my rose pattern onto cardstock. So that's our little bunny. And now I'm gonna take some of the Dollar Tree nautical rope and glue a trim around this pizza pan. Mm -hmm. 
also for all of you very observant folks out there you'll notice i am switching back and forth between a black and blue sweater during this video it was very cold in my craft room and colder than others on some days so i had to wear heavier and lighter sweaters depending on the temperature so now i'm using the dollar tree pen again in walnut the furniture pens this is kind of my to-go-to, but it's not perfect for every form of distressing, but for this, it worked just fine. And my also to-go-to Dollar Tree glue stick, and as you can see, I'm gluing the top, or the bottom half first, and then the top half, like I spoke about before, to make sure that it's centered. And then this is a big, beautiful pom-pom. Thank you to my daughter who had a package of six. She bought them for a Tinkerbell Halloween costume and she gave them to me and it was perfect for his tail. I believe she got them at Michael's originally and I made a little tiny side bow for his neck and now I'm putting together a messy bow with a combination of Dollar Tree and Hobby Lobby ribbon and again this bow is also included in my tutorial video so you can get more explanation if you want in that video and I decide that this needs a little tail that would look cute so I'm just taking some of that polka dotted ribbon and gluing it down I'm going to glue the bow in the center and then I'm going to strategically place the sides down in loops and tack it down with my hot glue so they stay in place. For the finishing touches, I chose to use some Dollar Tree little soft cream flowers and I put a flower on the bow in the center as well as a pearl from the Dollar Tree in the middle of that flower. And we're all done and I think he's super cute. Let me know what you think. Birds seem to be really a hot trend this spring and Easter and so I made this printable here and I'm showing you how I split it up on two different pieces of paper when it printed up so that it would fill up more of my pizza pan surface. You don't have to do that but I did it in paint.net and I do have a video that shows how to do it. It's a Christmas video where I make a reindeer and I can leave that down below in my description box as well if you want to know how I did that. So I'm showing you how I used masking tape on the back because it didn't make any difference. This is printed up on regular computer paper and it was thick enough that I knew I could get away with masking tape to hold it together because I wanted to make sure the top and the bottom of the birdies didn't slip. You know, I wanted their bodies to be aligned and I knew with tissue paper that might not, you know, work because that's really transparent once she glue it down so i went ahead and used a glue stick for that as well glued it down and now i'm using some of this folk art antiquing wax i love this brand it's super cheap and i think it works just as good as the other brand you know the other brands that are more expensive they're all just nice antiquing wax they're really slippery and slidey and perfect for faux wood so you'll see i paint it on and then i take a little bit of a you know a tissue and wipe it off to make it a bit softer. And then I even start to apply it with the tissue too, just to make sure it stays nice and soft and I have a little more control that way. And we give this a nice edge. And now I'm taking my first row of nautical rope and I'm going to go ahead and apply it around the edge. We're going to be doing a total of two rows of nautical rope but we're going to be using the brown nautical rope and now we're going to be using the white nautical rope. So if we just leave it as is, you can see the seam a little bit in real life. And the way you disguise it is you go ahead and take a little bit of white paint and dry brush it and that hides it perfectly. Now I went a little heavier on the S than I wanted to. You can see that, the bird singing part. And all I did was wet a little bit of tissue 
and wipe it off while it's still wet and it came off just fine and that's it we're going to start embellishing this but that's how you go about hiding the seam so here's some more hobby lobby ribbon another messy bow and we're going to glue that on the top add some pretty greenery again it's a mix of the dollar tree those little yellow I think they're like little mini roses maybe i'm not sure what flowers those are if someone knows please make a comment down below and some boxwood from amazon and this time i wanted to keep it natural and earthy i just left the wooden eggs el naturel and glued them side by side this is actually my daughter's favorite today she took this one and i did seal it with a clear varnish For this next one, I used the leftover paint I had mixed to paint the inside a soft beige color or a tan color. And I ended up doing something different, so you can skip this part, but I wanted to show it to you just in case it makes a difference in the outcome. I don't think it would, but just in case. So I've been having a lot of you request that I make a religious Easter <laughs> decor piece, so I thought I would do that today. I'm taking this Dollar Tree wooden cross and some of the Dollar Tree Mardi Gras beads, also called mariachi beads here on the West Coast and I'm gluing them around the edge of this cross. Now you'll see here, I'm taking and putting little beads of hot glue in between each one of those beads to make sure it's nice and sturdy. I'm gonna take some of the Dollar Tree lightweight spackling and just fill in the top hole, and then I'm gonna give this cross one coat of white chalk paint, and it does take a little bit of time because there's lots of nooks and crannies between the beads, and my favorite uh, well, I guess it's not really a brush, it's a sponge, but my favorite way to get in between those nooks and crannies are these sponges here from the Dollar Tree because they do have the beveled thin edges and that allows you to turn it sideways and kind of smush the paint in there and that way you don't miss any spots. I'm using some Elephant Gray from Apple Barrel Paint just to dry brush the beads and kind of make them look a little distressed. I really wanted to keep this true to my decor style. This was one of the more challenging uh, piece of pan crafts in this film because I, you know, what I saw online, I didn't like what I saw online, the color combinations, and I wanted to keep, like I said, true to my decor style and make, you know, a beautiful rustic, cross here so what I ended up doing was finding this sheet of paper online it's the hem amazing grace and it's on antique paper and I printed it up on tissue paper so I did show you how I did my tissue paper method at the very beginning of the video if you missed that go ahead and rewind all the way to the beginning and I'm just cutting it off here and I'm not worried about whether this is even or not because as you see I'm going to start tearing it in a bunch of little pieces and then I'm just going to start placing those little pieces on the pan to get an idea where I'd like to glue them down. I'm now taking the elephant gray and just lightly dry brushing kind of a distressed look I guess you can see I've missed spots here and there that's what I wanted that was a look I was going for I just did the border in the gray and now I'm taking the Dollar Tree glue stick and I'm going to apply heavy coats of it nice and thick and start placing the music paper down to cover all of the inside of the pizza pan And just to distress this a little tiny bit more, I took some more of the Elephant Gray and lightly, very lightly dry brushed just a little bit on the surface. I didn't even hit every single area, just here and there. And now I'm taking some more of the Dollar Tree Nautical Rope in white, or maybe that's cream, the Nautical Rope. I'm not sure what color that is. <laughs> I always call it white. It's an off-white maybe, or a cream white. And I'm putting a border around the tray. 
using a generous amount of hot glue, I'm gonna go ahead and glue the cross down in the center of the tray. This is some ribbon from Hobby Lobby, and I made a two-loop bow and then a floral bow from the gingham print gray one, and then I glued that in the center. I'm just going to glue that at the bottom of the cross, fluff it out a little bit. I decide that it would look better if it has some ribbon tails, so I go ahead and I use some extra ribbon just to glue some tails at the bottom later, you'll see in the video. But for now, I'm taking some of this beautiful lavender that they have at the Dollar Tree that's some really pretty lavender this year at the Dollar Tree I think they got complaints from one year when it was all falling apart the petals <laughs> they were all falling off so now it's really really sturdy and nice and I'm just wrapping the bottom of it with a little bit of the Dollar Tree twine I'm gonna glue that in the center of my cross because I thought that was a perfect embellishment and you'll see me glue the bottom of the ribbon on now I just dovetailed the ends of them, put two pieces on. One has wire, one doesn't, so they lay really pretty. And now I decide that that one little area there that was missing music was bothering me. So I went ahead and added some more music notes to that area. And we're all done. This actually ended up being one of my favorites in this video, considering I didn't know where I was going with this. I think the colors and the feel, I hope the camera does it justice because it came up absolutely stunning. And this was gifted to my daughter's mother-in-law. Happy Easter. For this one, I am using the Jumbo Craft Sticks from Walmart, and I'm using four of them. I just start off by cutting the bottoms off nice and even and straight, and then using a medium craft stick to hold it all together. And I'm just cutting the ends of that off. So next, I'm gonna take my ruler, draw a triangle shape at the top. We're gonna be making a little like roof here, and then I'm going to cut that too. Now when I cut those, they do splinter because it's really hard for me to nibble and I'm using, as you can see, Dollar Tree scissors. <laughs> and the craft sticks from Walmart, the jumbo ones, are a little better quality, so they're really hard to cut. But it doesn't matter, you guys, if it splinters because what we're going to do with this, you're not going to see the rooftop anyway. I do go ahead and sand it because I don't want to get splinters, but it's not a big deal, so don't panic if your wood splinters. And that's what we have so far. So now I'm taking a Kleenex and I take it apart. You know, it comes in like two pieces and I'm spraying it with water. And I showed you the glue I was planning on using from the Dollar Tree, the spray glue, but it was clogged. So luckily I had bought that purple spray on glue and I ended up using this. It ended up being better because I could see where I sprayed. So that worked out, but you can see what happens when the moisture hits it. See how it's wrinkling up? I I've never done this before, but I just had a feeling it would work and it did <laughs> because we're always trying not to get wrinkles. And in this case, I wanted them because I wanted it to mimic bark on a tree. So now those little raised edges there, you know, it's dry now. I'm taking sandpaper to sand those off and kind of shred them open because you know how bark has that look? It kind of lifts and it shreds. And I don't know, I hope you guys know what I'm talking about, but that's kind of what bark looks like if it's been out side it gets that look so I'm doing my best to imitate that so I'm using the elephant gray to start with to dry brush and bring out those designs and now I'm using some of the antique wax to finish off the rest of my distressing this actually ends up looking a little bit like birch wood even though I didn't mean for it to but it comes up beautiful so at first I think you know what I'm just gonna make like a roof on the top here I'll just stain it but I ended up changing my mind and it's probably good there's some shadow underneath there anyway but I'm just showing you the whole process of what I ended up doing I took a little bit of the wax I made a little hole there and then a little bit of the elephant gray I painted on top of that and then a little bit more of the wax to outline and just made it look like a nice little birdhouse 
you know how it has a little hole for the birds to go inside and now we're using the foam eggs from the Dollar Tree I took them off their little stake there to remove the ribbon and painted them white now I was just going to paint them with the Dollar Tree blue paint this is blue paint from the Dollar Tree it's that acrylic paint that I rave about this is more like a glaze I don't know if I got a faulty one or what but it's basically see-through so it didn't cover the eggs like I had wanted wanted them to but it ended up being better because I think they would have been too dark and instead I ended up with this really light blue which looks more natural when you're talking about eggs in the wild that's a better blue so it all worked out and I drew the shiplap lines on the trays you saw and now I'm taking some of the Spanish moss and that's going to be our rooftop so I decided that looked prettier so I'm just gluing it on the top giving it a little bit of a haircut so that it's not too wild and wooly. And then I'm gonna take some hot glue, glue the two little sticks on the back there that I had used originally and glue it down. Now, I do end up lowering this birdhouse. Originally, I was gonna make everything kind of bottom-centered and focused, but I decide it looks better not to do that. So I end up pulling it off repainting the pizza pan, letting it dry, and then gluing my birdhouse lower. But for now, this is what I do, because when I take it off, the whole thing stays together. So I have to show you this part. I put more Spanish moss on the bottom. This is gonna be the little nest. And now we're gonna use those eggs that we cut in half and glue those on. So this is what we have so far. And then here you can see me repositioning it down lower now because the nest didn't end up being as big as I had thought. I thought I was going to kind of fill in the bottom with a nest, but and you know, like a bow, kind of have a bow at the bottom of the nest, but I just decided I wanted the bow at the top. So what I did here was I just made two floral bows, one bigger out of the polka dotted ribbon and one smaller out of the burlap ribbon and glued them you know glued the small one on top of the bigger one and then i glued the little tails in there and again strategically kind of looped them and tacked them down with hot glue and now i'm adding in some dollar tree little soft beige flowers in the center of the bow and for those of you that watch my channel i've done this many times i'm taking one of the jumbo craft sticks and deliberately cutting the edges jagged and trying to splinter them to make it look like an old sign and i'm using the antique wax it is stressed a little bit pencil to write out my word first now normally i would write easter on this or maybe spring but i liked this one so much that i am going to keep it up all year round so i went with the word home instead and a neat little trick here if you, the ink bleeds into the wood beyond your control you just take the tip of a utility knife and scrape it off and you can get that edge nice and clean again so I go ahead and glue this on the top and I make the twine hanger a little bit longer on purpose because I think that looks super cute. I love this one. Let me know which ones were your favorite today. If you had fun today, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. And as always, thank you for watching. Thank you for commenting. I love you guys so much. And until the next one, breathe deep, fret not, and do things that make you happy.